Barbara is the Vice President uh, of the Western Field Office of the National Trust, and she's going to speak about uh, new ideas for protecting cultural landscapes on Western public lands, particularly um, the acronym BLM, our Bureau of Land Management, which is not our Park Service but has very large land holdings. Barbara. Well, I want to add my thanks to those of my colleagues who spoke to you earlier today. I feel like I've found some new kindred spirits on the idea of large landscape protection and importantly this, this issue between natural and cultural. I sometimes felt like I was the only person who was dealing with that. So it's nice to know it's a worldwide concern and not just something we deal with in the West. Well, American history did not begin at Jamestown. you're laughing to some people that's they sort of forget that it began thousands of years earlier and exists in the kivas cliff dwellings towers pit houses granaries and rock art that remain in the american west and when taken in the context of their cultural landscape these sites reveal information about a people who once lived upon the land people established their homes raised their families and recorded their stories and their dreams on canyon walls almost half of the land in the West is federal land. And you'll notice in terms of the colors, the little blue eye areas there are the national parks, just to give you an idea how small they are, relatively speaking. And this large yellow area is um, the land managed by the Bureau of Land Management. These lands have stunning scenic beauty and contain diverse and important cultural landscapes, historic structures, archaeological sites, which belong to all of us. This is for my friend, Teresa Pasquale. Native American tribes hold many American landscapes on public land sacred. This is Mount Taylor in New Mexico, and Teresa will talk to you more about that later. And because most Native groups do not have a written history, these landscapes are their history books. And to lose them would be like burning down the Library of Congress. Protecting whole landscapes is vital for retaining and understanding how people lived on the land and adapted to their changing natural environment. Natural and cultural landscapes, areas whose constituent resources are closely related to one another, are inextricably linked because in the environment shapes human societies and people in turn affect their environments. Most of the federal land in the West is managed by the Bureau of Land Management. And along with managing the most federal public lands, BLM oversees many of the most significant cultural resources, including 21 National Historic Landmarks, five World Heritage Sites, and over 263,000 documented cultural properties. BLM oversees the largest amount of public land in the United States, but continues to receive inadequate funding, less than seven cents an acre, for cultural resource management. Accordingly, these resources are increasingly threatened by destructive activities. And this is the BLM logo that has been revised by a BLM archaeologist to show you that it really seems to be about dumping trash, grazing, um, the site for energy development and for uh, a lot of the um, transmission lines. Less than 8% of the 258 million acres managed by BLM have been surveyed for cultural resources. And because of their multiple use mission, which I just showed you in the previous slide, places of antiquity are endangered by vandalism and looting, reckless recreation, and an energy development. Research management plans written by the agency that determine appropriate land use often design conflict right into the process. A multiple use mission shouldn't mean that all allowed uses happen on top of one another. As Las Vegas continues as Las Vegas continues to grow, Gold Butte, located north of the city, is experiencing more looting and vandalism of rock art. In southeast Utah, San Juan County is promoting BLM lands as a mecca for off-road vehicle enthusiasts. The county's desire to construct a loop road for ATV users may have resulted in the illegal construction of this road through a capture wash, damaging several archaeological sites, including two burials. Most of the energy development in the West, whether oil and gas, wind or solar occurs on public lands. Utility scale solar projects can be two to three square miles in size. The ground preparation required for these projects is irreversible. This has become a particular problem in the California desert and what looks to us like a landscape that is inhospitable to humans is in fact a sacred burial ground for many California tribes. 
For the past 40 years, we have been primarily protecting cultural resources through compliance with something we call Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act using flag and avoid archaeology. Flag and avoid is a practice of locating and temporarily marking the boundaries of archaeological sites, then modifying the project to physically as vo avoid as many of them as possible. This is an American phenomenon that has been practiced for over 40 years because it is cheap, fast, and relatively protective of sites. However, while the surface evidence of individual sites may be protected, their context, their landscape has often been destroyed. This is Dickey Springs in South Central Wyoming, and this is the Jonah Field, south of Pinedale. And what you see in this slide are three acre well pads sited five acres apart. And this is the result of flag and avoid compliance with the National Historic Preservation Act. Individual well pads can be sited away from archaeological sites. However, large, dense oil fields like this one dramatically change the landscape. Simply routing gas wells, transmission lines, access roads, and other developments around individual sites is an inadequate solution because it fragments cultural landscapes and destroys physical and visual contexts that help us understand broader human behavior. A better choice is to inventory large areas of land before development projects are planned so that significant cultural landscapes can be identified and protected intact while development can proceed without delay in other locations with fewer significant resources. We know that historic buildings are best understood in the context of their environs. And since 1990, the National Park Service has issued guidance on the identification and recordation of large cultural landscapes significant as sacred sites or traditional prop cultural properties through National Register Bulletin 38. But actually, listing large landscapes on the National Register of Historic Places has been more difficult. Oops. Sorry. Nine Mile Canyon in northeast Utah was included on America's Most Endangered Places list in 2004 to draw attention to the direct and indirect effects of energy development on the canyon's world-class collection of rock art, where heavy truck traffic sent plumes of dust laden with mag magnesium chloride onto 2,000-year-old rock art images carved onto canyon walls. Used to control the dust, the mag chloride also had a corrosive effect on the rock art. While BLM had identified the canyon as an area of critical environmental concern indicating its significance, this designation afforded little protection for cultural sites in the canyon. And because of its known archaeological importance, the canyon had been studied by archaeologists since the 1930s. And recent concerns about the, the development of gas wells convinced local archaeologists to be, and students to begin more systemic surveys. However, nothing had been listed on the National Register in decades. So in 2006, the trust provided funds for the nomination of Nine Mile Canyon Archaeological District to the National Register to promote landscape level protection for the archaeological sites in the canyon based on their cultural connectivity to one another and to the environment. And while the canyon was best known for its wonderful rock art, it also contains pit houses, granaries, and mesa top towers. And together, they provide a more accurate picture of how people actually lived in the canyon. However, BLM, the State Preservation Officer in Utah, and the Park Service disagreed and instead determined that the sites in the canyon should be part of a multiple resource nomination, requiring that individual nominations be prepared for hundreds and ultimately thousands of sites. Besides being more cost effective, we believe the district nomination would have provided more opportunities to provide landscape level protection for Nine Mile Canyon. And working with a project proponent, BLM, and other local partners, we were able to negotiate agreement to provide landscape level protection for this project, but only for this project. What about the next one? The Clinton administration significantly ramped up landscape level protection when in 1996, the president used his authority under the 1906 Antiquities Act to proclaim Grand Staircase Escalante in Southern Utah a national monument. At 1.9 million acres, Grand Staircase is somewhat larger than the state of Delaware and is the largest United States monument in land area. It was also the first monument to be managed by the BLM. Grand Staircase was followed by other BLM monuments, Missouri Breaks in Montana, Agua Fria in Arizona, and Canyon of the Asians National Monument in Colorado. And they became the impetus for a new management paradigm called the National Landscape Conservation System. The National Landscape Conservation System was established to conserve, protect, and restore nationally significant landscapes that have outstanding cultural, ecological, and scientific values for the benefit of current and future generations. 
NLCS lands represent 10% of the BLM's 258 million acres, and besides monuments include national conservation areas, national historic trails, wild and scenic rivers, wilderness areas, and wilderness study areas. And because of the secretarial order drafted by the National Trust and signed by Secretary Salazar, the protection of natural and cultural resources in NLCS units is higher than in other, has, is a higher priority than on other BLM land. And additionally, these lands are exempt from new mineral patents and transmission line corridors. And while valid existing mineral rights are grandfathered into new monuments, no new leasing or mineral or oil and gas rights may occur. Canyon of the Ancients National Monument in southwest Colorado encompasses 171 acres of BLM land and was designated in 2000 by President Clinton through his presidential proclamation to protect cultural and natural resources on a landscape scale. The monument contains the highest known density of archaeological sites in the United States. You literally cannot walk anywhere in this monument without walking on pot charts with rich, well-preserved evidence of native cultures. The more than 6,000 sites reflect all components of past human life, villages, reservoirs, kivas, cliff dwellings, sacred springs, agricultural fields, petroglyphs, sweat lodges. Some areas have more than 100 sites per square mile, and the total number of sites is estimated be, to be between 20,000 and 30,000. The resource management plan for Canada and the Ancients was the first to contain language that called for landscape level protection for cultural and natural resources, and as such is a model for the management of other monuments. Unfortunately, this wise management approach is complicated by the fact that 80% of the monument is leased for oil and gas and CO2. CO2 is that bubbly thing that you get when you drink pop. So every time you drink of it, you can think of where it came from. <laughs> Canyon of the Ancients. Just across the state line is San Juan County, Utah. Comb Ridge is the most visible geological formation here, and on Cedar Mesa there are some of the finest intact pueblos, towers, cl and cliff dwellings I've ever seen. However, the BLM land in San Juan County is not part of the NLCS, and therefore lacks the protection and funding afforded to resources across the state line in Colorado. There are other landscapes on BLM land that are rich with cultural resources and should be part of the National Landscape Conservation System, like those in San Juan County but are not the Great Bend of the Gila River in Arizona, or Gold Butte in Nevada. But there is hope. There's draft legislation to make Great Bend of the Gila a national monument and Gold Butte a national conservation area. But unless Congress acts or the President uses his authority under the Antiquities Act to proclaim the monuments, these landscapes remain at risk. Unlike other countries, in the United States, there are no federal laws that mandate the protection of significant cultural resources. Listing a property on the National Register means it's worthy of preservation, but it does not require it. Section 106 of the National Preservation Act requires a conversation and consideration, but not protection. Although this was not the intention, it has largely become a tool of mitigation or results in the loss of landscapes through flag and avoid archaeology. And while our presidents have the authority to make national monuments, and this president's already made four, including one last week, La Paz in, uh, in memory of uh, Cesar Chavez and Chimney Rock in Colorado, which is one the National Trust strongly promoted. So far, they are not on the scale of the Clinton, area mon Clinton era monuments like Grand Sta Staircase and Canyons of the Ancients. 2016 is the anniversary of the National Historic Preservation Act. And now, perhaps, is the time right here at this conference to begin thinking about what we want the practice of cultural resource protection to look like 50 years from now. The environmental movement long learned a long time ago that they could not save an individual species without saving its ecosystem. We need to do the same. We cannot fully understand, appreciate, and learn how people lived on the land unless we focus on landscape level identification, designation, and protection. This will take money, and it will take political will, and right now we are short on both. But if we don't act now, the future will look a lot like the past. Thank you.